with a title like The Butcher's Knife Cares Not for the Lamb's Cry, this week's episode of Star Trek Discovery was never going to be a timid affair, and it's not long before the ever-present threat of war kicks off in a very real way. In a fast-paced episode set against the ticking clock of a Federation mining colony under attack from the Klingons, some of Captain Lorca's rough edges begin to show as the series tackles the age-old question of what sacrifices are necessary in the name of war. Advertisement continue reading below Lorcas Jason Isaac's warmongering nature is in full force here, opening the episode by determinedly preparing his crew for battles they're likely to fight alone, and challenging Michael Sinequa Martin Green to weaponize the creature that destroyed the USS Glenn last week so he can use every asset available to him in the fight against the Klingons. In fact, Lorca is so intent on being remembered on the right side of history that he insists the Discovery's spore-based instant travel technology is up to the task of jumping a larger distance than it has done before, to answer the distress call from Corvan 2, giving the crew just six hours to perfect the new and largely untested transportation method, copyright Netflix CBS-related Star Trek Discovery. Everything you need to know Finn his superior officer explains the situation, the captain seems more worried about what it means for Starfleet, considering Corvan 2 is a key colony in producing the Federation's transportation substance, dilithium. Failure in this mission means half of Starfleet could be grounded and the Klingons could win the war while half of Starfleet are left as sitting targets. Yet when their first attempt to jump fails and the Discovery is sent off course, Lorca plays the distress call from Corvan 2 shipwide, shifting the focus to the innocent lives now at risk if they fail. It's an interesting situation to put Lorca in, and one that blurs his motivations even more than the shady character references other members of the crew have already given him so far. The situation leads to many of the crew members, including LT Stamets Anthony Rapp, questioning their position and what's expected of them now that the USS Discovery is a warship. Stamets didnt sign up to be a soldier, Commander Landry Reka Sharm was ripped to shreds and killed in an effort to contribute to Lorca's cause and First Officer Saru Doug Jones is growing increasingly distrustful of both Lorca and Michael both of whom, he says, act insincerely and without thought of the consequences in pursuit of their own goals. Copyright CBS advertisement continue reading below Michael herself, however, is beginning to feel a little overshadowed by the characters around her. Stamets' own struggle to keep doing the impossible tasks required of him is a lot more compelling right now than Michael's quiet resignation, even if her studious application to the task at hand gave the ship the key to solving their navigational problems. The discovery that the creature, now known as a tardigrade-named Ripper, is the supercomputer they need to direct their travel does lead to certain ethical ramifications when it becomes clear that using Ripper causes it pain, which leaves Michael with a moral dilemma to consider is it acceptable to cause an innocent creature pain if it helps give them an advantage in War Doctor Who fans may be recalling the beast below at this point because ultimately it does give them the advantage, using the tardigrade allows the discovery to jump into a War zone and destroy all the Klingon ships with ease, save the colony and jump out again before the people on the planet could even get a glimpse of their savior as a triumph for the ship and its crew. It's clearly a turning point for the captain, Stamets and the pioneering technology it could provide to Starfleet, but Michael is the one left feeling the burden of what they've just achieved, copyright CBS.